guys welcome back to the channel it's your girl colors and i'm back with another video and today's video is going to be all about 21 things people do not tell you when it comes to pumping now i know it has been a little bit while i said i was coming back like two weeks ago and i only posted one video and i've been in and out it's just been a whole lot of whole lot of there are going to be videos coming out about what's been going on like some updates girl got a new car there's been a lot of transitions and trials and tribulations in my life but that is all made for another video but i just wanted to go ahead and get back to the regularly scheduled program you know what i'm saying and come out with a video so i thought this would be a good video to start off with so let's just go ahead and jump right into it the first thing in no special order that i have noticed when it comes to pumping that people did not tell you is how tedious and strenuous it is to pump now when you're pumping and you might think to yourself like okay i'm off x amount of time and i can pump every two to three hours to build my stash because that's kind of how i thought but they don't tell you to take an account to the time that it takes to pump now in the beginning you don't really create a lot of milk so um it might take you longer to pump they only really want you to pump tw 10 to 20 minutes at a time tops i did way longer than that uh, in the beginning because i really wanted my milk to come in and i see it kept coming kept coming so i kept pumping so in the beginning i probably was pumping like 35 40 minutes sometimes and that became stressful imagine doing that every two to three hours you're pumping for 30 45 minutes not to take account how to clean your parts depending on what uh pump machine that you have um you might have more parts you might have less parts but you have to keep the parts clean you have to hook the parts up every single time that you actually about to pump and then you have to take an account of once you're done the cleanup you gotta clean your boobs off you gotta uh, pour the milk into a bag or some people i know they just kind of collect bottles or whatever in the refrigerator for the day for the child so if not you gotta like do that and label i don't personally label but there's just gonna be a lot of things that can make the process long so definitely in the beginning it was taking me easily an hour from start to finish to pump so if it takes you an hour to start pumping and pump and clean up and put up every two to three hours pretty much it feels like every hour and a half you're getting ready to pump again. That's not to take into account if you are even breastfeeding. Pumping can be very tedious and sometimes a stressful thing to do. The next thing they do not tell you is how much nipple cream will be your best friend. I promise you. I have watched plenty of videos on people pumping, but I don't think I realized how much when they told me like, hey, get nipple cream, you know, it help you out from cracked nipples, like cool. So in my head, when people would say that, I'm like, I can get it if I want, uh, or if I don't want to, it's not really that big a deal. But no, listen to me. Pumping in nipple cream will be your best friend. You need this and you're welcome. So just to let you guys know, let me make this clear now. I have gone in phases where I pumped and breastfed and I have went into a phase where I exclusively only pumped. So I kind of know both sides of those things. But even when I was exclusively pumping and how much the flanges uh, stretches your nipples, your nipples will go through a transition that you have never seen your nipples go through before. It can be a whole lot. I noticed that when I wasn't using it before, my nipples would hurt all the time every time I pumped. Uh, this time, it don't do that. I started using nipple butter, which I personally use the Earth Mama's nipple butter, and that thing is my best friend. Another thing that someone did not tell me when it comes to pumping, is that all pumping machines is not created equal now what i mean by that is all breast pumps do not pull the same amount of milk now one thing about pumping which is kind of a little insight bonus if you do not get it fully out it will think that your body doesn't need the amount that it's creating because of that you won't be creating enough milk you will slowly slowly start making less milk based off of what you're actually pulling out because of that if you're getting 
a breast pump that might not have the best suction for you, you're not gonna be creating a lot of milk. Therefore, you cannot create a stash. I just kinda wanna put it out there that it might be okay to try maybe one or two different breast pumps to see which one works better for you. I know they're expensive and you may not want to do that. Now, if the breast pump that you have works good and you're getting a good amount of ounces, then I'll say just roll with that. But otherwise, um, just in general, it's something that I did not know all breast pumps don't have the same amount of suctions. Another thing to keep in account when it comes to pumping is that if you are a person who is exclusively pumping, you cannot slack. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're exclusively pumping or just pumping in general, but I would highly suggest to not slack because if you do slack, you will create less milk because it doesn't feel that your body needs the amount of milk at the time that you're pumping. So for example, let's say if you are pumping every two hours and then it sometimes you're going between like four hour increments and then it's two hours then it's five hours and it's three hours your body is going to be confused but understands that you don't need the amount of milk as if your child is like a newborn if you are not pumping on time and you are inconsistent with your pump sessions you will not become engorged and your body won't send as much of those signals like hey you need to pump but i have noticed when i did that i had seen a major decrease in about a week and a half of doing that and i started to get down as low as two ounces per pump session another thing they do not tell you about pumping is that pumping can easily hurt as much as breastfeeding usually when it comes to breastfeeding is the only time you hear about your boobs and your nipples hurting because you're getting used to the suction, the bite or whatever, all that type of stuff. But no, pumping hurts too. And that kind of correlates with what I was saying earlier about needing the nipple cream and stuff like that. Like, so it's just a whole lot. But yeah, that is that. But what I really wanted to say is that when you are pumping, trust and believe you will be washing a lot of bottles. Now, you may be thinking, I only need about good eight bottles and be in there, just go washing and cycle through. No, trust me, you want a good, a decent amount of bottles. Mind you, you are pumping every two to three hours, let's say. This is not to take into account your pump sessions plus hitting the door for whatever reason. If you're going for errands, you're gonna need at least three to four bottles prepared just to account for however long you're out. Disclaimer, this does not include those people who do not care about whipping their boob out or feel like they have the time to be nursing and all that stuff. Now you only got four bottles, but you've been pumping every two hours. Now you got many bottles to wash every single time you wash. Just save yourself the headache and buy multiple bottles, but even if, if you buy a lot of bottles, trust me, leave you will be washing a lot of bottles. So you have to take that into account when it comes to how time consuming it is just pump, so yeah. So another thing that I did not realize when it comes to pumping is that I still had to wake up early in the morning and pump. Like, I don't know why my mind just didn't naturally be like, duh. Like, when I say every two to three hours, bitch, it's every two to three hours. You still got to pump. I knew that if I was, like, breastfeeding, like, girl, obviously you got to get up, pick up your baby, attach to the boob. But no, you still need to set your alarm and still pump every two to three hours. So if it's two o'clock in the morning, you need to pump two o'clock in the morning and... I know some people go a little bit longer stretch and they'll put it to like four o'clock in the morning, which I have done personally too. But personally, you want to really catch between that two and three o'clock in the morning time to pump or even breastfeed because uh, that's when you are creating the most milk of the day. And I noticed when I started doing that, that's when I was getting up there and that eight to 12 time just as a tip, but yeah. This doesn't mean just because you're only pumping that you do not have to get up and not pump, girl. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones because I hear this all the time, but people do not tell you because I have done my own research. I have reached out and 
got the information that I needed. And the biggest thing they do not tell you is that you do not, do not need to pump and dump. So what I mean is if you are a drinker, like myself, I'm not an alcoholic, just so you know, but your girl is about to be 30 next month. And yes, I do drink. I didn't start drinking until I was 25, so I'm a little bit late in the game, but I do like to drink. And a lot of times when people see me in vlogs drinking, they like to tell me like, girl, are you still pumping? Girl, are you still breastfeeding? Girl, are you gonna dump that milk? But yeah, you do not need to pump and dump. But the disclaimer is, is that when you are not dumping, you do have to wait the allotted time before you can feed your baby. For example, if I had some alcohol <laughs> and I had one glass, basically I'll wait like an hour and a half if I got a pump or breastfeed so that that milk would kind of just deteriorate and go out of my system. Or if I have two glasses, I like to wait two to like three hours before I actually try to best feed a pump. So the alcohol over time will naturally evaporate just like if I wasn't a mom or whatever and it was just in my system and it would just go out of my system over time. It's the same thing. I would just make an account that um, the more you drink, the longer you have to wait, but you still gotta take an account of those two to three hours, so you're still wanting to drink, then in those cases, yes, you do have to pump and dump because you don't wanna stretch too long of a time just because you're trying to savor your milk. It doesn't make sense because you're not gonna make more milk because you waited longer. So yeah, pump and dump is not a thing that you're obligated to do, but if you are drinking all night in those cases, then yeah, you would want to pump and dump. Another thing that they did not tell me or I didn't realize when it comes to pumping is that girl, no matter where you are, you still gotta pump. So if you're going out or you're going on vacation, you're going to Tahiti, Bali, Dubai, it don't matter where it is. You still need to take your pump, your pump pieces, your pump parts, all your pump associates with you wherever you go. You still have to pump, even though you are on vacation. So if you are at Disney, or you are Bush Gardens in Tampa, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. I still gotta pack my whole tote with me, you know what I'm saying? To uh, actually pump. That is not exclusive to only being home or whatever. So if you gotta go to the car, pump in the hotel room. So don't forget, like, when you're taking an account, like, I want to pump only or I'm a pumper, like, you have to take all your assistance with you, so. That doesn't change, unfortunately. One thing you can do to increase your milk supply when it comes to pumping, and I, this is something that I would highly suggest to do, you definitely want to power pump power pumping if you don't know what it is and I don't want to sound too smart because personally I haven't power pumped but I know that it works um, so basically what power pumping is is that you would wake up in the morning pump and an hour later I think pump and correct me if I'm wrong because I don't feel like researching or whatever but basically an hour later after you pump you will pump again then you'll pump for 10 minutes and then off for 10 minutes pump for 10 minutes off for 10 minutes and I think you do this over like maybe an hour time I don't really know I'm not gonna act like I know every single thing but I have friends who have done it and seen a tremendous amount of increase I'm just lazy as hell and really don't want to do more than I have to do. I'd rather do supplements and other things like that, but I know that it does work. Another thing that especially no one told me when it comes to pumping is that pumping does not compare to a baby suction. Now, this kind of correlates to what I just said about all pumps not created equal, that includes your child. Your child will get the most amount of milk out of you than a pump ever could. So if you want to see an increase in milk supply, I would suggest you pump in breastfeed. I personally only breastfeed maybe twice a day and the rest I pump. And that's just because and I notice when I do that, my milk supply goes up and then I'll try to stay on top of the pump. You might want to do both, but to each of them. This information was one of the things that you cannot return a breast pump machine once it has been open. 
I know there might be some places that may accept it. It's very seldom because that is a hygiene issue. Like, do you want a breast pump that someone's open and stuck their nipple inside of and put their bacteria inside of a tube and fed it to their baby and then they returned it and then you buy it? I think not. But, I mean, that's just kind of like the overall rule. They're not really supposed to. But I even have heard of people even having problems of returning breast pump machines that hasn't even been open. It's like, it's one of those things that if you buy, you want to make it very clear by a manager, not an associate, if you can return this, if you do not no longer need it. I promise you, you will save yourself a lot of headache. I did a lot of research before I decided to open my machine, but yeah, like a lot of people, a lot of companies are very iffy about accepting returns on breast pump machines, so, well. Another thing that people did not tell me when it comes to pumping is that you do not, my friend, need a pump bra. All you need is a sports bra with holes cut in it. I'm just saying. So they always say like you need a breast pump, you need crip, um, nipple cream, you need nipple pads, you need a pump bra if you want to be hands free. Like don't you don't have to go out and buy a $34 Target pump bra. Granted, those pump bras might be a little bit more um, longer lasting. But what I would suggest if you are trying to save the coin is buy a sports bra that is very uh, elastic. It kind of like stretches out. So I'll buy one maybe slightly smaller to give way for washes and things like that. And just see where your nipples come out in the middle of it. I have a video talking about this so I might link that down below if I remember. But yeah. Um, I cut holes in them and stick the fledges in and that was free because I already had that sports bra and I can still be hands free. So you do not have to buy some bougie pump bra. You can just use a sports bra and just circle out, cut them out and throw your nipples in and there you go. You are still hands free my friend. The next thing on number, however number there is at this point is that flanges size matter. Now if you do not know what the flange is, the flange is basically the pump part that directly against your nipple to actually pull out the milk and that is a flange that does come in different sizes which I had no idea of I thought all flange sizes are created equal but girl it is not you want to make sure that you are getting the right size because if you don't you can get cracked nipples and also scabs and all those type things on your nipples and two you will not be pulling the, the right amount of milk out of your nipples because your nipples is not fitting inside of the hole properly so you want to make sure that you have the right size for you I really don't personally know how you know that the size works out for you. I would highly suggest going to a lactation consultant. There's a lot of free ones that are offered by the counties or whatever. So I would highly suggest looking into that and bringing the flanges in and have them tell you if that flange works out for you. So yeah, all flanges are not created equal. One thing I was just about to say that I wish someone told me, but I did actually know this ahead of time and still was not about that life, but it is a good backup plan if you are very concerned about your milk supply and do not want to breastfeed, is that you can rent a medical grade breast pump. Now, these medical grade breast pumps do way better suction than any other store-bought suction you can buy. The medical grade ones that you can use in the hospital and you can test it out there, but you can also rent them. I have heard them around that $50 to $70 range a month and your girl was just not about that life, but the suction is way better. The ones that I have personally seen with the Medela brand medical grade one, so yeah, just know that it's just an option if you want it. Another thing is that you can get a free breast pump through your medical insurance. I mean, granted every medical insurance is different and not created the same, but in most cases you can at least get a manual free breast pump 
um, through your insurance. So you definitely want to check out that. I do know most uh, Blue Cross Blue Shields, AVMED, like state insurances. You can even get electric best pump like Medela. It just depends on whatever your insurance offer. It just takes a little bit longer to get to you. You have to just let them know like, hey, when you had the baby or when you're having the baby and it kind of goes from there. But yeah, I got it mailed straight to my house. Mine was personally a manual one in about three weeks, I think it was. But you can get it expedited if you had your baby earlier, so. This one I actually love, and that is that breast milk can sit at room temperature for about six hours. I have heard eight, I heard six, you know, between the two, but you can literally pump your milk and leave it out for six hours uh, if you need it to. So if there's a case where you uh, maybe have pumped and don't have anywhere cold to store your milk at, just know that you have a good amount of time before it actually expires, before you need to really figure out life. But I would just highly suggest if you're out to get like one of those ice little cooler things or whatever and just keep storing them in there. But there's no like, if you're in the middle of the night, don't feel like doing the whole 10, going in the refrigerator, go out, get your pump parts and all this other stuff. You can pump, wipe off, set it to the side, and know that your baby might drink it in like the next two hours. But take into account if your baby sleeps through the night like mine, so yeah. So the last thing there is to say about pumping and what things that people did not tell me is that when it comes to pumping inside of a bottle, your breast milk has a lot of fat. And that was one thing I did not know about. I heard people say it before, but it didn't like drill in my head. So when people say that your breast milk got fat in it, there is literal chunks of fat in the bottle in your breast milk and you won't notice it right when you pump but like when you're going in that six hour range and times it's, it's been sitting the longer it sits the more that you would see it in the nipple sometimes or on the edges of the bottle let's say if you are a person who use formula which i I use formula too. You usually see over time like the formula starts to separate or whatever and that's all you see and then you just see residue of like where the milk kind of slid across. With breast milk as it sits you will see chunks and you like what is that? Where did that come from? Did I not clean my bottle? You did. Trust me. But if you have fed your baby the bottle, set it down, fed it down, you have pretty much shaken up and separated that fat over time. And that's the reason why you see it later. But yeah, and even if you, uh, let's say you pump into a breast milk bag, put it in the refrigerator, you will see the separation in the bag and you have to like shake it up before you give it to the baby. So I guess that is all there is for this video. I am so excited to be filming and film a little bit back to myself. I have been very stressed out and upset a lot and going through a lot of emotions and whatnot. And I just was not in a place in this month and the end of last month to really get back to you guys but i apologize but i know you guys understand you guys have been extremely supportive to the growth so far oh by the way your girl is on her way to 4k that is so crazy like i remember in the beginning of starting this channel that i thought that it would be a long time before i get anywhere near 5k or anything like that and i always told myself if i get more than like 2500 then i'll feel like i'm becoming successful on youtube and now that i'm at at this moment of filming i'm at 39.67 like i don't think it's like in my head how big of a deal that is even though granted i am still a very small channel like compared to a lot of people who's on youtube who's like at least 15,000, 20,000. i don't even see more than 20,000. it's usually like like that 18,000, and then i'll see like 50 something thousand and then i'll see a hundred thousand like the people but to think like if I was in a room with that amount of people who supported me and supported my vision and supported everything that I have gone through in my whole infertility journey, like that's an extreme blessing and I take every number of person who support me uh, to heart and I just want to thank you guys even though I'm not at that 4,000 mark like even the number that I have is completely amazing and we are just growing girl we're growing so I'm 
percent happy about that and also i will be posting a video soon on 21 things people do not tell you about breastfeeding so be on the lookout for that very soon and i guess that's all for this video and i'll see you guys next time